Hey everyone, it's Jojo. Thanks for listening to Geese Bumps. Uh, listen, the episode you're about to hear is really funny, but we had some audio issues. So if you're listening with headphones, it might kind of sound like we're talking underwater. Jeff worked really, really hard to try to salvage this episode because we had so much fun recording it. Um, so apologies in advance. Next week, it's going to sound normal. Thank you so much for listening to Geese Bumps. Have a wonderful day. Mini bump in which we examine R.L. Stein apothecary. I'm Danielle, PhD. She said apothecary. Apothecary. Yeah, I said apothecary. Get over it. It's R.L. Stein apocrypha or ephemera <laughs> or apothecary. Well, you know what's great is like this episode is arguably neither. Uh, I'm JoJo. Uh, I also have a PhD. I'm Jeff. I am having a hard time today. <laughs> so welcome to another mini bump in which we step outside of our usual goof box into a smaller, more uh, form fitting goof box. Today, I have thought up a concept for these episodes. So let, let me give you guys a little peek behind the, the curtain. Oh, no, this is going to look ugly. So on our regular Geese Bumps episodes, not a hard sell because we read a book. We talk about the book. We've got a good base, you know. We got a good sponge. It's light. It's airy. And then we just start pouring ganache and put some fondant on it. We have a good foundation. Good foundation. For the mini bumps, that's like scavenging out in the woods for something to eat, to drink. You're looking for shelter. Basically, we find whatever barrel we've been using to do our show and we just start scraping up the fond <laughs> at the bottom. Um, so for today's mini bump, we have not watched a live action episode. We have not looked back at Arl Stein's other works. Instead, today on this mini bump, we will be taking you through the Goosebumps Battle Royale. I have thought that we should take the eight Goosebumps protagonists that we have discussed recently and pit them against one another until we have finally a Goosebumps overlord. Which of the children in these books would survive in a tete-a-tete -tete until one reigns supreme over all the others. Yeah, so we got sports brackets. So I'm, I'm going to be giving some, some matchups, and then we're going to discuss and come to a conclusion amongst the three of us as to who would win in this one-on-one -on -one matchup, and then we will go through each until we are finally left with two. So I have... I have four characters on one side of the bracket, four on the other, and then the ultimate winner from each side will fight... To the death? To the death. Uh, probably just to get knocked out. These characters, we have eight of them. I'm going to go over them. Please do. Because we're going to have to probably... We're going to have to remember... We're going to remember a lot. Who these people are. The first matchup. I'm going to go through the matchups, and then we're going to... We'll get started on them. The first matchup, we have good old Sam, Sam Bird. Samantha Bird from Be Careful What You Wish For. Her battle will be against... Evan Ross from Monster Blood. So Samantha Bird of Be Careful What You Wish For versus Evan Ross of Monster's Blood. Yeah, so that is matchup okay. number one. Matchup number two, Alex Hunter. Ah, yes. From Werewolf Skin. Our boy. Will be battling against Joe Burton from Lawn Gnomes, Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes. Oh, I see you two inept people together, I yes. see. Matchup number three. Carly Beth from The Haunted Mask. Ah, oh, yeah. She, mm -hmm. she, she'll My fucking girl. kill you. Yeah. My girl. Uh, against Margaret Brown from Stay Out of the Basement. Oh, shit, dog. Oh, God, she's hard to talk. Oh, fuck. She's a legend. She went into retirement shortly. She, she went into uh, baseball for a little bit. She came back out, and she decided, I'm going to rejoin the league that made me goosebumps. And our final matchup, number four, is going to be Lucy Dark from The Girl Who Cried Monster versus Max Thompson from Let's Get Invisible. Oh. So those are our four initial matchups. Thanks. All right. Uh, Jeff, let's begin that first battle. So, Samantha Bird from Be Careful What You Wish For versus Evan Ross of Monster Blood. Now, these two have had a hot rivalry for years. Mm, indeed. Yes. They've been in the press. They've been taking Oof, a shot at each on other. Twitter. Oof. Yeah. At the weigh-in, they really just, they stared each other down. Yeah. They got that, they got that nasty face on. They got that nasty, nasty face on, nasty Danielle. Page. Danielle, what's your, your first thought regarding this matchup? Who's going to... Who's going to come out on top, do you think? Tell me who they are again. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, Jeff, this is fantastic. Okay, my first thoughts are, uh, 
Sam Bird for sure. Why are you so sure Sam Bird? Okay, because Sam Bird, first of all, has a a flapper lady as her like ace in the hole. Okay, now we gotta. I, now hey, listen, Danielle. I hate to step on your toes, and Jeff, you're gonna have to lay down some ground rules. Are we allowed to talk about TV show characters? Or are we only allowed nope, to talk just about the books? Other- Let's that's, do this. Now, Danielle, yep. by all means, continue. And I know I said we weren't going to be taking shots at each other, but fuck you. You're going to lose this. <laughs> oh, time. you fucking think so? Oh, Go ahead. man. You no, got no, some I'm other coming to you right another, now. Okay. Whatever stupid point you need to make, I'll be here. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, Sam Bird, because she is resourceful. Okay. She's quick. She can run pretty good. And she's tall. So she's going to tower over tiny little Max. And Max fucking gets bitch slapped all over that book by his female friend whose name I forget. So he clearly can't handle like women with power and authority. He just, he just curls up into a little ball and dies. You think his misogyny will be the end of him. Correct. Okay. All right, Danielle, your pick was stupid. So you're stupid. Here's, Dan- so Danielle's got Sam Bird in her corner. Well, Danielle's about to lose. Joe. Right. Who well, cares what she has? So Joe, give me, and without much interruption, Joe, give me your take. So <laughs> Daniel had to move her mic away. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, obviously, because we're not arguing. Why didn't we just do that? We should have gotten a mute button this whole time, just like the presidential debates. So Evan uh, is clearly the superior goosebump warrior in this in this uh, in this contest of of wills. I would call it mm-hmm. um, for for this plain and simple reason alone. He uh, survived his adventure to come back for future adventures. He defeated the monster blood and went on to have many more fun monster blood esque adventures. And just to counteract uh, Danielle's statement that uh, Evan could not handle defeating a, a powerful woman. That's all he did in this book is regulate on two different depictions of feminine strength. Well, so, so Joe is going toward Evan based on the, The knowledge that Evan does succeed in his endeavor. So my take, it's harder than I think it it, you guys are making it out to be. (gasps) Wow. Yeah. Samantha, you have to remember, Samantha has at her disposal wishes. Yes. So Yeah, but she fucks those up. That's the thing. So Samantha has wishes at her disposal, right? Big, big huge thing. Evan has an enormous dog at his disposal. So really what it comes down to is Sam has the wishes that she could literally wish away and wish her own victory if she does it right. Based on the book, (laughs) she would not do that. Evan gets beat up by two guys in town. um, And then thanks to his enormous dog who ate the monster blood is able to win the day. I'm going to have to say Evan. Bullshit. Yeah, unfortunately, as a tiebreaker on this one, I'm going to have to say that Evan, just because he has a straightforward attack plan with Big Dog, whereas Sam is going to unfortunately have to use wishes and fuck him up. Big Dog! It's all clothing, and that's where it comes from. So we have our He's first got a winner. Big Dog t shirt that just says victory. Oh, yeah. no. Second matchup Alex Hunter from Werewolf Skin versus Joe Burton from Lawn Gnomes. I'm not going to say Alex will win this contest. Um,. It's it's more like Lawn Gnome Kid will lose because he sucks so, so bad. He was fooled by a gnome. <laughs> he was fooled by a garden gnome. The garden gnome said the gu- said to him, hey, listen, <laughs> I'm a, a all my garden gnome brethren are in the basement of an of an orchard supply hardware. Can you go rescue them for me? And he said, yeah, because he's an idiot. So he's dumb. His thinking brain is dumb. Okay. And I hate him. So is and it he'll lose it, because he's an idiot? Is is he losing purely by lack of intelligence? Nothing that has to do with Alex. Purely because Joe Burton. No, sucks. Alex kind of sucks too. I mean, Alex <laughs> is a good protagonist. Don't get me wrong. He's got his own strengths, but I don't think if Alex's obvious strengths are unnecessary because the main character in that story of uh, gnomes sucks. So bad. Okay. Okay. Is that your so? Is that your final answer? You're going to go with uh, with Alex? Oh, absolutely. I'm going to okay. go with Alex. All right. Listen, listen, Danielle. Mm-hmm. I don't see how you can debate this one, but I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let you finish. I'm listen, gonna let you finish, motherfucker. I was gonna take your side, but now I'm not. Alex. Alex. He's got a camera, right? He's got a camera, 
And uh, if you if you take apart that camera, you get a lens, which is a disc of pure glass. You break it. I like where this is going. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Excuse me. What? Jojo, wait, wait. No, I want to see where she goes with this. Hold on. Okay. Well, <laughs> I know. What, I think I have an idea. Continue. You break it into two shards. You take those two shards in your hands. <laughs> you fucking, you fucking, Wolverine, this kid. <laughs> I had my mouth full of coffee when he started that night. He thought you earned it. <laughs> I had to keep it in my mouth this whole time because I was going to spit it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Daniel. He takes the lens, breaks it in two, has two shards of glass in each hand. Continue. It goes and he fucking Wolverines that kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking just... <laughs> well, who wins, Jeff? Well, man, that really puts a spin on things. So, Danielle, I love what you did with um, the situation you were oh, provided. Oh, here we go. Here we go, However, Daniel, this guy. However, I strongly doubt that Alex Hunter would take the only thing he loves in this whole world and break it in order to win. In order to live? I think that his adoration for photography and that camera which he braved the woods to he survive would die for that fucking camera he almost did die for that camera and the only reason i say that joe burton has one benefit has one ace up his sleeve who the hell is that his big dopey friend oh you mean moose 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 no mo like a summon monster from final fantasy 7 so you're telling me that he got moose's summon crystal and he's gonna take that to the fairy godmother <laughs> and is gonna use that to de defeat ansem uh, he has a big beefy which we are told repeatedly strong enormous friend named moose who could probably pile drive anybody in these goosebumps books at his disposal so you're okay. Hold on a second. And now, the, so because because homeboy has a fucking friend, he wins. Well, no, because I still I'm giving you my because thoughts. Hannah is a werewolf, and that is the book. So so I so this is the thing. You guys both voted for Alex. I'm just giving you my perspective. I guess we're going to put Alex as the winner for this one. So next one, round three: Carly Beth from the Haunted Mask. Uh huh. Versus Margaret Brown from Stay Out of the Basement. Oh, boy. So, Danielle, I'll let you go first. Who is your who is your pick and why? Out of Carly Beth, so Carly from Haunted Mask, or Margaret from Stay Out of the Basement. So, Carly Beth has the Haunted Mask. Yeah, so she's got whatever X-Men power that is. And then we've got Poison Ivy over here. I'm going to say... I wouldn't call oh, it Poison a, Ivy. Good, uh, yeah, okay. Why? She doesn't have power over plants. <laughs> You don't she think has, that she could direct those plants down there? I mean, scientifically, she probably does. She totally could, she man. She could probably pick up a plant and throw it. She, she yeah, could that's, do that's that. Power. That's power. That's basically, point. That's basically she could kill Batman with that. So yeah, yes, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she's smart. She picked up on things a lot faster than Carly Beth, I would say. Carly Beth just put on a mask because she ate a worm. True. If you if you if you if you strip away everything from these books and you get to the meat of it, the haunted mask. Carly Beth ate a worm and was like, "Fuck it, mask time." Fuck it, I'm gonna kill everyone. This the haunted mask is a lot like the mask of the movie. <laughs> she pulls on the mask and then she says, "Somebody stop me!" Because of all, because I'm wow, is that physically and emotionally unstable? <laughs> I like that Danielle threw in a catch phrase, which is not in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, you know, my favorite part is that movie, in that movie is when uh, Jim Carrey put on the mask and was like, Bazinga! Wowza! Remember that? Half five. Remember when he said Bazinga? <laughs> Half five. <laughs> and, then, and then he turned into the guy from The Big Bang Theory. Yeah. So, so Danielle, out of those two, who's your choice? <sighs> yeah, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Margaret. You're going to go with Margaret. I am. With, 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 woman, with girl whose dad turned into plant. Okay, but see, she knows she's crafty. She can kill. She's ready to kill, and she fucking will. She did she use will. that axe. Yeah, she will fucking take that axe. She will Lizzie Borden your whole fucking world. I okay. forgot she had an axe. Yeah, that's her, that's the, that's her weapon of choice is axe. Yeah, it is. All right, so Danielle's going with Margaret from Stay Out of the Basement. Joe, your thoughts. So aside from her gaining all the amazing powers of Jim Carrey's The Mask. <laughs> Carly Beth mm -hmm. was her name? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew that. Yep, good job. Um, she 
has a spear with her head on it. <laughs> Remember that? I wonder if she gets stronger with the mask on. I think the adrenaline runs through her, like when you see your child trapped it's under like a car. So you pick up a car? Yeah. Mm, it's just a big old adrenaline shot, like Pulp Fiction. Yeah, it's like, I can't, I honestly, I can't orgasm unless I trap my child under a car. I need that shot. <laughs> yeah, I got it. I got to run out and pick up, pick up my kid. That's what the movie Crank was about. So Joe, what's your, what's, what's your, what's your final take on that? What do you think? I think, I, hon- I think, uh, I think I have to give it to Haunted Mask Gal. She's got super Jim Carrey strength and she's got a spear. I'm going to have to go with Carly Beth as well. You guys are dumb. She, uh, not the smartest. I would definitely say that if it were a test of, of intelligence, that Margaret would come out on top. Um, although Margaret did take an entire book's length to find out that her dad was a plan. She knew. <laughs> she didn't have proof. I got to go with Carly. I got it. I just, just because in the book, she was, she was buck wild and I can see her just letting loose. I mean, she did lose her goddamn mind. She I did lose that. her mind. She, she, and, went, she was clinically, she was diagnosed as clinically bonkers. Yeah. Yes. So Carly's, Carly's going to win that one. Lucy Dark from The Girl Who Cried Monster versus Max Thompson from Let's Get Invisible. So Lucy Dark is a monster. Next. Yeah, this one's kind of a gimme. Yeah, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lucy Dark is an actual monster. Yeah, this one so, we don't have to debate a whole bunch. Okay, but here's the thing. Can Alex summon his mirror? The mirror he had like, no control over the mirror. The mirror was also, I'd say if he summoned the mirror, the mirror would fight against would fight yeah, against the Max. mirror is really kind of a double-edged sword. Because he'd have to use the mirror. He'd have to use the mirror on Lucy Dark, which yeah. would make a mirror version of Lucy Dark, who would be good. Point is, Lucy's an actual monster who has yeah, no reason I mean, I to can't. go hide in an attic. I I could formulate some kind of thing, but I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm just gonna. Yep. Lucy wins that one. Lucy wins. Yeah. Unfortunately, not all Goosebumps protagonists are created equal. So this is now the second round. We take the winners, and now we're going into the next round. So Evan Ross from Monster Blood, who we said won because of his big old dog coming to the day. And then we have Alex Hunter, werewolf skin, who Wolverined it after breaking his camera <laughs> and using the lens as two shards of glass that he swiped at his enemy until they bled out. Oh, Evan Ross. For sure, Evan Ross. Joe says Evan Ross. Yeah, because he's, he's already... He's dealt with... Listen, he's tasted... The blood of monsters. No, he hasn't. I don't think he ate any of it. No, 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 no. Like metaphorically, like the like the okay. in his heart, in his heart is an unspeakable rage. But also, Evan's Evan is dumb. Evan is a dumb motherfucker. Like he keeps that monster blood around. It keeps growing, so he puts it in a wheelbarrow. That's right. He did try and he didn't try and dump it down the sewer or take it anywhere. He just put it in a bucket and then put it in a shed. Yeah, put it in a pot, put it somewhere because he's a fucking idiot. If if this is going to come down to a battle of wits between Evan Ross and Alex Hunter, I would say probably Alex Hunter is more intelligent. Sadly, yes. So are you going to go with Alex? I, I'm going with my boy. Joe, are you going to stick with Evan? I'm going to stick with Evan. Okay. Because, just because he has so much experience killing monsters. Gotcha. I'm going to have to go with Alex <laughs> because, yes, Evan has also his dog still at his disposal. But, you know, the dog is going to have a kinship with Alex Hunter because Alex is on uncle. Maybe he smells the other oh, dog. He's like, him. he smells like dog. I like. I think that is entirely exactly what would happen. I think that the dog would be confused. It wouldn't be a benefit. And I think that Alex sadly is more intelligent than Evan. And, and Alex would... Use some other part of the camera he destroyed probably to still go in and, strap, and, and baby. clean up. The strap, baby. The strap. Yeah, he'd choke him out with yep. the strap. Yeah, gonna get garroted. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with Alex on that. Carly Beth from Haunted Mask versus Lucy Dark, a girl who cried monster. This is the interesting matchup because you have yeah. two basic monsters fighting each other. Oh man. So it's, it's Lucy versus who? Lucy Dark from Girl Who Cried Monster, who is a literal monster, and Actual Carly monster. Beth from Haunted Mask, who is a monster when she puts the mask on. So I am gonna have to go with Carly Beth. Because it seems like when she turns into a monster, she kind of loses control. Like she doesn't have a real good uh, grasp on what she's doing. Would you say she's so excited and she just can't hide it? And she's about to lose control. (laughs) But if you think she can hide it, you are dead (laughs) fucking wrong. (laughs) Because, uh, you know, the car, uh, fuck it, Lucy Dark, she's smart, but she's a pretty harmless monster in comparison to Carly Beth. Like, She's sort of a friendly librarian bug eating monster. So you're going with Carly Beth. Yeah. All right. Joe. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Carly Beth too. 
just just because uh you know she she has like she basically bought like an instant leveling token for yeah. her monster powers. Yeah, she did. <laughs> she spent fifty dollars of her own real world money to get yeah, leveled up. And Lucy, even Lucy says it. She's like, "Man, I can't wait till I level up my monster abilities." Yeah, we did forget that Lucy is an ineffective monster and that she doesn't <laughs> even have fangs quite yet. I still think fangs. she would beat Max Max Thompson, but yeah. So I think we have to all agree that Carly Beth would come on top. Yep. Yes. Okay. For sure. That takes us to the final round. Okay. And right. unfortunately, I think this one's going to be kind of a gimme. Okay. But again, not all protagonists are created equal. For the Goosebumps Battle Royale, Goosebump Overlord, Alex Hunter from Werewolf Skin versus Carly Beth from Mo uh, Haunted Mask. I don't think that's such a gimme. You don't think it's a gimme? No. Okay. No. Uh, jo actually, well, Daniel, you went first. Jojo, you get to go first. Werewolf Skin guy has no fucking chance. I'm what? sorry. He's what gotten by on his gumption about? thus far. But I, I, I'm just, I'm sorry. He just doesn't, he doesn't have, he doesn't have it. He has no tangible powers. He has no tangible abilities. Haunted Mask Gal has a haunted mask. He himself has no actual werewolf powers. No, but he's an honorary one. He's, he, so, he's, and he's learned from them. He's <laughs> supped at their table. He he's supped at their sweet, tasty he's table. He's drunken at their glass. All right, Joe, what's your final thought on this? You're scared of everything, dude. Carly or Alex. Alex could just walk up to her and go, boo. I, I still, I, I got to give it, I got to give it to Carly because Alex is, Alex's raw human chitin has no chance <laughs> against the physical strikes you, of Carly you, you, Beth. You understand haunted that she mask wearer. hasn't turned into like, uh, like Shredder. She's just got a mask on. She's, she's still, still a 12-year-old girl. She's still a tiny 12-year-old girl, okay? Yeah, but she's all hopped up on candy and mask strength. No, she doesn't like candy, remember? Yeah. She's hopped up on just mask. Just mask. Just mask. Kids, mask. Not even once. <laughs> Not even once. Not even once. So are you going to stick with Carly, Joe? Yeah, stick with Carly. Danielle? Sticking with Alex. You're sticking with Alex? Yep. <sighs> this is a bit harder because Carly is, if you take away the mask, if you strip her down to what she is at her core, she's a, she's a girl who is a scaredy cat. She is afraid of everything. Yes. Now, wearing the mask, which is what she is doing in the book and what she's been doing in all the battles we've had so far, um, she is um, a, an unbridled monster that just goes around. Um, Not unbridled. No, she goes. She's, she's bridal. She's 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 still in there, and she's still trying to like. But she can't control some of her like impulses. Yes, her impulse control is gone. Alex, now he we if we're going to base it on the guidelines set so far, he has as his disposable these Wolverine claws <laughs> <laughs> made out of lenses from his camera that he broken. Unfortunately, based on pure adrenaline, I'd have to give it to Carly because also, the, again, the mask. If the mask itself is sentient, which we know it is, I for guess, the most part, yeah. it is also going to have that sense of self-preservation. <laughs> and and Carly may be a ragged lump of flesh by the end of it, but it will still continue to force her to fight. Yeah, she's gonna that her body's gonna become just like a, a she's a puppet. A she's a smushed potato after this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say that just based on the guideline set, Carly's gonna have to come out on top. You guys are simple. But he's it's fine. not Danielle. He's not powerful. Joe. He is not strong. She is Danielle, a tiny, Danielle, skittish twelve-year-old. He is normal type human mom. <laughs> you guys are the Carly worst. Beth is You're the worst. Notorious. Carly, Carly yes. Beth, because she is the most buck wild of all the Goosebumps protagonists that we have had. Yes, and she was in a book that I described as almost perfect. Yeah, so. I guess well, it that is, means nothing. I guess it, it is. It is. It is only right that um, the most goosebumps book and the most goosebumps, goosebumps book has has the goosebump overlord at its center. So, so that was the goosebumps battle royale. After much deliberation, some some tears, some exclamations, a lot of fighting. Um, I think we've come to, and I think a lot of listeners would agree. A lot of hey, a lot of listeners who forgot to shut this off would agree. <laughs> I think I think the listeners will agree with me. I believe that I will be fan favorite, and that is all. So, so Carly Beth, congratulations! Um, we'll be sending you a check in the mail. Thank you to the band Dog Party for the use of our theme song "Bad Dream" off of the album "Hit and Run." It's a wonderful song by a great band. You can check them out at dogpartylive.com and dogparty.bandcamp.com. And uh, do Dog Party, if you ever wanted to hang out and talk about Goosebumps books, you know. You know where to find us. 
I think literally they do because we had to fill out a bunch of stuff when we when we got the lights of the song. Also, Danielle, Jeff, and I do another podcast called The Rolls We Made, which is on Podbean and everywhere else podcasts can be found. It's a fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons podcast, and it's just as funny as this, if not funnier. Uh, the next book we're going to be reading is The Babysitter, R.L. Stein's The Babysitter. Uh, we're going to be talking about that one on December 8th, so one week from today. All right, hello. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Stop being jump scared by this, Jeff. Well, I'm sorry. We just talked about Halloween stuff and goosebumps. I'm scared. I got goosebumps. I, if you couldn't tell, uh, R.L. Stein is here again. Hello. Drop down from the ceiling like some sort of... Ninja. Ninja. Yes. Yeah. Robert Louis no. Stein. Oh. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Lawrence. It's Robert Lawrence. Robert Lawrence Stein. Thank you. I'm it's, sorry. I got it wrong. No, that's, that's incorrect. Oh, also wrong. Okay. I'm sorry. Well, what is it? What is it now? Rabbit Lung. I'm Rabbit Lung. Stein. Sir Rabbit Lung. Sir Rabbit Lung Stein. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Is that a family name? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's uh, my grandfather's. Okay. He was uh, from... He uh, was a rabbit. He was a rabbit. Uh, R.L. Stein, you're here. You might as well make yourself useful. We have some positive reviews, I believe, on iTunes from people who have, have listened to the podcast and given us a little bit of a shout out. All right. So why don't you give them a shout out? I would like to give a shout out to Wreck-It Riley. First of all... I love that name. I might use it for my next Goosebumps book. So Rickett Riley said that uh, they love this podcast so much. As a kid who was too scared to read Goosebumps, I love hearing about all the stories and what makes them so silly. That's perfect. It's That's exactly a- spot on. So I'd like to give a shout out now to Bill M. Three, four, zero, zero, two. And don't forget to... Press nine to dial out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you, Bill. We appreciate it. What did Bill have to say? Bill said the hosts are very funny and provide actual insights into if all things Goosebumps books. The books are campy and silly, but the discussions get surprisingly real. I'm glad they're not wasting those PhDs on highbrow quote unquote literature. <laughs> and we've done that already. Yes. Don't worry, they've wasted their PhDs on all kinds of other stuff aside from this. The whole degree is wasted on them, yes. Well, that's nice. Well, thank you, RL, for giving shout outs to people who gave us positive reviews. You are so welcome. All right. Well, I just threw a head of lettuce outside. <laughs> so, RL, why don't you go chase down that okay, head of lettuce? Go. All right. There he goes. Uh, I'm JoJo. I have a PhD in English. I'm Danielle. I have a peach HD in English. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> I'm Jeff. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Long live Carly Beth. This has been Geese Bumps, a Did You Mean Goosebumps podcast. And until next time, stay out of the mix. Just like somebody I used.